After class, to clear their heads of numbers, they would go to the movies. They wanted to see themselves reflected, see themselves up there, tickling the parts of the universe, usually just beyond their fingertips. They couldn't make their own films, so they wrote. They raced each other. We write to know we are not alone, she said, and she pushed her shoulder to his, and her hair caught up in a breeze. They could not rob a bank, so he devised the heist, and she sketched out all the ways it would go wrong, the one character who fumbled, the one who betrayed, and that dumb luck that gets the anti-hero wedged between that rock and that hard place. They couldn't solve a murder, so he described the grisly scene, and she worked backwards to the moment innocence was stained long before, when fate was sealed. My goodness, did they laugh. They couldn't fly a spaceship, but they could build a rocket. He devised its crew, and she turned half of them to women, and then pointed out that this was just a western set amongst the stars, and that the captain even dressed like a goddamn cowboy. They could not fall in love, but away from him she wrote sonnets, and she had in her a character who could steal the hearts of heartless men, to say nothing of the sensitive, yearning ones who wrote stories that would always need some guiding hand. And he would never tell her, but she was every heroine he ever dreamed of writing down. His notebooks were leanly composed. She went through twice as many, and they were filled with scratched-out phrases and words written over with other words, and a whole universe of marginalia, doodles and musings and doodles and musings. He would sit over her shoulder as she went through his ideas, filling out the characters, breaking the backs of things. But she would never let him open her pages, even if he'd ever even tried to do so. Her first play was a vehicle, he said, but he took her out to dinner to celebrate the great reviews, and he didn't ask once about her thoughts on his latest idea, not once, even though he knew he needed her spark of light, and he thought of little else the whole evening. From New York, she dutifully responded to his emails when he sent them, breaking backs still and shining light across his darkening shadows. We write to know we are not alone, he wrote, finally. And she had crossed that out long ago in a notebook, now boxed in the attic space, tucked behind the baby toys and unopened wedding gifts. We write to understand, she thought now, and we write to help others understand too.